Good day guys, um, today we'll be looking at the Contemptual Framework. So over here you can see that there are so many subtopics that we have. So we'll be looking into one by one. Okay, so for the first thing first, let us look at what is actually Conceptual Framework. So the concept is to give a guideline um, um, for the preparation and presentation of the financial statement. Alright, so this framework the concept of this framework is to make sure that it gives a guideline uh, uh, which consists of theoretical principle of generally accepted uh, accounting principles. All right. So the general purpose of it, the fundamental is to apply regardless of the accounting model. Okay, it doesn't matter of which business that we are talking about. So this particular framework can be able to give a, a guideline to them. All right. So moving on to the objective. Okay, under objective, we have a few. Okay, the first thing first, as I said, as I mentioned just now, would be the general purpose of the financial statement itself is to ensure that to provide information. So this information can be obtained through financial position, financial performance, and cash flow. Under financial position, you have, you have asset, okay, liability, and the owner's equity. All right. <clears throat> and for the general purpose, um, this is to ensure that uh, also uh, to give information for the financial performance. For example, how much is our income, how much is the expenses of the company and so on. And also for the cash flow, because all this information from that we obtain from the financial position and the financial performance, we can able to do the cash flow. So moving on, how does this conceptual framework gives us a measurement? So basically, um, under conceptual um, framework, we have four types of measurement bases where we have historical cost, um, current cost, realizable value, present value. All right. So historical cost is that whatever cost that happens um, way before okay, the transaction finishes. All right. So a number of different measurement bases are used in financial statements. So the first, first, first thing first, we have historical costs. So the costs are recorded at the amount of pay um, or the fair value of the consideration given to acquire them at the time of their acquisition. So which means this happens during the time that the moment you buy that particular item and that would be the cost that is um, will be recorded in our financial statements and so on. So liabilities are recorded at the amount expected to be paid to satisfy the liability. So if you're supposed to pay your payable today, then that will be your cost. Even though you did not pay today, but you pay it tomorrow, that would be, okay, you, this cost will be considered you have to pay today. Okay, moving on to the current cost will be, current cost will be the asset are uh, carried at the amount would be have to be paid if the same or an equivalent asset was acquired currently which means whatever asset even though we have purchased it earlier but we look into when we come to the costing we look into what happening in today okay so this is for what is actually happening for today okay if this particular cost okay if you today were to buy an item for 50 ringgit okay um a Person B were to buy item, the same item, but he bought it one week earlier. Okay, maybe that costs around 60, 60 ringgit. We will still follow 50 because why we are using current costing. All right, for realizable value, this value will be normally obtained by selling whatever asset that we have to any cost. Okay, minus with the whatever cost that is involved in making the sales. It's normally the whatever amount that we have. Um, left over after minusing all the expenses that we have. Okay, so present value as what I say, whatever value that is at the moment, how much is the value of your asset, how much value of your liability at the moment. So these are the measurement basis that's normally used in financial statement. And as all we have, all of us know, okay, the most commonly uh, adopted measurement basis would be the historical cost. All right. So now, moving forward with the qualitative characteristic, all right, so under qualitative characteristic, we have two things, which is um, fundamental qualitative characteristic and enhancing qualitative characteristic. Okay, why does this is 
important for us this is to make sure that our information even though it's not quantitatively perfect it's not quantitatively um, accurate we need to make sure that qualitatively also our information should be accurate so this gives a guideline to the companies to make sure that whatever information they generated through this financial reporting should be relevant should be faithfully representation should be comparability should be timeliness should be verifiability or understandability so these are the characteristics that the each company should make sure that this particular information has all the values has both the quantitative quantitative uh, characteristic as well as qualitative characteristic all right and moving on to the fundamental qualitative characteristic we have relevance okay under relevance this is to make sure that whatever information that we have okay it has to be different okay it has to be or um, relevant to the nature and the material it makes a difference to the decision if it does not makes any difference let's say it does not make any difference then it is not useful okay next thing would be the faithful representation so faithful representation has to make sure that whatever amount or information that, that we created or we presented has to be neutral no bias all right and free from error so these are the things that this faithful representation so which means our present re, our presentation okay on financial statement has to be neutral with no biasness and it has to be free from error so let's say if this particular thing were to be um uh, compromised then definitely the f the faithful levelness of our um of the our shareholders stakeholders customers on earth for the company would be be part no, there would be an uncertainty all right so it is very very important for being an accountant we need to make sure that whatever information that we present whatever substance that we present to the public or for our shareholder has to be neutral with no error and he has to be no bias which means we are we are not supporting anyone we are not supporting our company to make sure that there is so much of um profit and whatsoever all right and this is very important because this is this part it's not about quantity part it's about quality to ensure that whatever information that we have taken whatever number whatever figures they have taken it is actually faithfully represented all right so moving on and enhancing qualities um qualitative uh characteristic would be the first thing first is comparability this is to ensure that we are able to identify and similarities and differences between entities and year or on this is to make sure that whether this is basically on how do you enhance your company's performance how do you enhance your company's sales by how do you get this information by comparing it by comparing whatever sales that you got for this year and comparing it with the sales that you got for previous year so from here you be able to enhance your sales department okay whatever project they're taking whatever strategy that they are making by just comparing it the information that you have and whichever you have prepared it all right timeliness is talking about like if any information is less useful the longer it takes to report which which means if you were to take at least one year in order for you to generate that one particular information it will be no longer use because i need the information at the moment if i would ask you the information in one week time you should be able to generate in one week time if you were to go if you were to take more than one week time it's definitely not going to be useful for me because at the moment i don't need that particular information because i i needed the information way back then all right so this information should be more can be done within the timeline all right can be generated within the timeline for understandability all right whoever using the informations that we have the information that we have prepared okay and we and presented to them they should be able to have reasonable knowledge on the business and activity by just looking through the financial statement that we have prepared so which means our financial statement it should be not be so complex until our stakeholder our shareholders okay or investor or the government itself all right the users themselves cannot be cannot understand what we have written there what we have prepared there okay so it should be very understandable so 
So when we are creating the pro okay, profit and loss statement or we are creating the statement of comprehensive income, sorry, okay, it should be very, very easy for them to know, okay, this company has come up with this much of profit. So how do I look into it? All right, so that should be the main goal of our pre financial presentation. All right, and the last one is to make sure that it has a verifiability. So very verifiability is talking about to assure that information that represent that way we come up in the financial statement all right and it represent the exact situation that's happening in company let's say if we were to come up with sales um around let's say we would come up with sales 500 okay and we need to make sure that we have the invoice that amount for 500 not more or not less it has to be same same goes to our inventory Let's say we have inventory around 500, then we would go to our warehouse. It has to be 500 units are still there. All right, that is the verifiability, which means our whatever information that we have in our schedule are the same to be whatever happening in the real, whatever economic phenomenon that's happening. All right, so that's what is all about qualitative characteristic. This qualitative characteristic is to ensure that our information are more useful and our information are actually relevant, are uh, actually faithfully represented, whatever is supposed to be neutral, no bias, all right, free from error, and it is supposed to be created right on the time when it's needed. It can be comparable so that we can see what is our performance and it should be understandable. It should not be very complex until I have to do a formula for it. A, X, a, a square plus B square equals C square, all those things. It has to be very easily understandable. Even your note, disclosure note also, it should be very easily understandable by these shareholders or investors or so on. All right. And verifiability able to make sure that the amount that we have on paper are the same with the amount that happened to be in the real um, real situation all right so moving on we look into what is the benefit of a conceptual framework how does conceptual framework help the companies help the um, uh, IASB and so on so first thing first it resolves the accounting dispute let's say if someone were to were to have a different thought of um, about one particular accounting treatment or let's say two accountants are talking about one treatment but they are discussing it in an opposite way so conceptual framework will give them a guideline will give them an answer they will try to dispute okay, telling that whatever dispute that we have we try to resolve by coming up with the guideline for them and of course um Conceptual framework will be a reference point. It's something like our syllabus, like some kind of dictionary that we have for accounting. So we look into any problem that we have, as any any type of dispute that have, any type of um, confusion that we have, we'll look into the conceptual framework. How does the conceptual framework let tells us to treat this particular accounts? How does a um, conceptual framework let us know how do we supposed to create the format, create the schedule? for example okay and also okay presenting a true and fair view information this is very important because why conceptual framework a part of it would be the qualitative characteristic and how does we measure it all right so this would be helpful in order for us to create and present a true and fair view of our accounts in the company and also this provides us an uh, element of recognizing and de-recognizing information that we have in our company. For example, even though we have around 1,000, uh, 1 million, uh, okay, that doesn't matter, depends on the company as well, all right, information that we have, by recognizing the right information, okay, the correct information that is needed, okay, to, to prepare a relevant and faithful representation, we'll be able to come up, okay, with a with a true and fair view presentation all right this is very important recognizing what should go into the income statement what should not go to income statement should i include this particular disposal into the income statement so that thing is provided by conceptual framework so conceptual framework is like a guideline for us it's like a reference point for us another part is that de-recognizing it so de-recognizing is let's say if you have an asset and a part of it you manage to sold it out because of due to a loss of control whatsoever so there that's when this particular conceptual framework will come and inform like 
gives us a guideline telling that these are the things that you need to eliminate. These are the things you're not supposed to be, be there. Any derecognization of the asset should be done before you presenting it to the public. All right. Another way is that, okay, another benefit of conceptual framework, it gives the information about the international accounting standard bodies. International Accounting Standard Body is the body that is actually uh, used uh, to, to provide the underlying rules, the conventions uh, and definition that underpin the preparation for all the financial statements okay, that prepared under the International Financing Reporting Standard. Okay, So basically, uh, this is to ensure that whatever standard that we um, that is developed is within the conceptual framework. Let's say if the ISB were to come up with the new standards, so it has to be something within the conceptual framework. And also, this conceptual framework also provides a guidance on area when there's no standards exist. All right. Let's say if there is no nothing, no nobody knows what to do. So conceptual framework will help them to give them a guidance. All right. And it's also to ensure that whatever process that we have at the moment to improve the existing stand, we just need to improve it. And also to ensure that whatever financial statement that contains the information is to be useful to the other users. All right. Okay. Moving on, the next thing would be capital. Uh, maintenance. So under capital and maintenance, we have two types, which is financial capital, and then we have operating physical capital. So this is very important for um for a company as well. How do you maintain your capital? So when we talk about financial capital, we are talking about the funding that we have. Okay. Whatever money that we have, how do we? How are we gonna uh, maintain it? How are we gonna maintain? Let's say you have two to three loans. How do you gonna maintain it? All right. When come to operating of physical capital, we are talking about the non-current asset. Okay. These are the operating physical capital that we are talking about. How do you gonna maintain it? Okay. What? Okay. You are looking into. Let's say if you wanna talk about um the depreciation. Uh, method are you going to follow reducing balance or are you going to follow straight line method so these are the things that the conceptual framework will come into when I talk about loans maybe the um, conceptual framework will have have a guideline on how does this loan should be taken all right for example if you are already on a loan that pays uh, uh, interest you're not supposed to take another new loan examples all right okay and then moving on we have how does this conceptual framework okay how does conceptual framework helps okay how does it benefit more okay conceptual frameworks help the ifrs all right to review and develop the national accounting standard it makes sure that there is a keep on ongoing process to learn on and to make sure to develop and of course, to revise and review and revise on whatever accounting standard we have to ensure that the upcoming time, for example, now like COVID-19, right? Most of our, our um, uh, transactions are done online. So how do you going to uh, address that? So we, how do you going to address these issues? And now like the not... Um, the assets are not being used. How are you going to calculate? Are we going to calculate the depreciation? How, how, how are we going to uh, calculate the, non, uh, the net, um, net current asset? All right. Okay. How does we going to calculate what would be the net value of the asset? Since we have not used any of the asset, are we still going to include our depreciation into the valuation? How are you going to do that? So that's how these IFRS things, they will look into and try to come up with this accounting set. Okay. And even though the, if there is any emergencies going on, like example, COVID-19 itself. And other than that, um, conceptual frameworks helps the auditor by giving them an uh, IS compliance, which means that they come up with a guideline for the auditor themselves. All right. So the auditor themselves will look into the IS compliance and to make sure that they compile, okay, whatever amount that they have, or sorry, whatever audit they have done is actually compiled to the IS. For the users, okay, conceptual framework helps 
right users to have a better interpretation because why because we already done whatever it's necessary we look into the measurements basis we look into qualitative characteristic we made sure it's very understandable for these users hence they can have a better interpretations so basically um, in summarizing the whole thing so conceptual frameworks helps the company to make sure that they have a guideline all right they have a set of rules that allows them to um, to come up with an financial statement which is standardized throughout every um, throughout the world and ensures certain uh, informations are recognized and de-recognized in order to give a true and fair view information for us okay for auditors for ifrs okay to review okay to review the national accounting standard and so on so on all right all right guys so i hope you guys understand what is exactly conceptual frameworks is all about okay and what is the objective of a conceptual framework and how does this uh, measurement basis has been looking to okay how, whether we have the financial position or financial performance we look into the income statements and expenses uh, and so on all right and we look into how does this uh, what type of characteristic has been looked into in order for us to have a very good information, whether it's relevant, faithful representation, comparability or timeliness or understandability and verifiability. And then we have looked into what is the benefit of um, conceptual framework and how does this helps in the capital maintenance, all right? And how, and how also these um, conceptual frameworks helps the IFRS okay and how does it helps the auditor in order to make sure they have an is compliances and of course for the users and how uh, okay it it gives a better interpretation for the users all right so with that being said see you guys on the next class take care bye bye